Hey and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to explore how to make a hard vacuum. And when I say hard vacuum, I'm referring to the type of vacuum we get in deep space. But we want to explore how to make a hard vacuum in a glass tube such as this. And without having access to either a turbo molecular pump or a diffusion pump or other specialized equipment. Stay tuned to see how we accomplish this. Okay, folks, what I have here is one of several attempts at making a x-ray tube, basically a cold catheter x-ray tube. What I have there is a coil consisting of a titanium wire that's been wound up. And then the wires that go through the glass, which I had to basically melt into the glass and try and get uh, the glass to wet the metal. Those wires consist of molybdenum. And I've got a piece of mica, a tiny piece of mica, to keep the leads from shorting out. And you can see how I've wrapped the titanium wire around the ends of the molybdenum and then pinched it off to get an electrical connection. And then what I did to for further sealing, I added some, um, some two component epoxy in there as well. So hopefully we'll have a gas type seal here. Now what I'm gonna do with the end of this tube First of all, I'm gonna heat this entire tube up and get it real hot to, to uh, remove any traces of water from the glass. Let it cool down, connect it up to a vacuum pump and a two-stage vacuum pump, vacuum it down to as low a pressure as I can possibly get. And then I'm gonna um, seal it. Then I'm gonna Put an electrical current across that titanium and heat it up to bright yellow heat to try and burn out any traces of uh, either nitrogen or oxygen or both that remain in the tube and I'll leave that on and then hopefully if I can get all the air molecules out of this tube we might be able to use it as a cold cathode x-ray tube which is the goal. Now molybdenum is an interesting metal because it's got a similar coefficient of expansion to borosilicate glass. It's not identical, but I think it's close enough to be able to get a good metal glass seal. And so we'll be able to test that also. Okay, I finally connected it to a vacuum pump, evacuated most of the air and sealed the tube with a torch and now let's test it with a Tesla coil. The low pressure air within the tube should glow if there is sufficiently low pressure. You can see I've got it quite some distance and it's ionizing the air. Now that trace of air that's left there, I need to get rid of that. I'm gonna basically heat up that titanium wire coil there to see if I can get rid of the remaining air. And to do that, I'm going to pass an electric current across these two uh, wires. Okay, I've connected it to a switch mode power supply, which I've got set on a really low voltage. I'm going to turn on the switch mode power supply right now. And it's about 2.3 volts across that coil. The reason I'm going to raise the voltage slowly, because I think the wires that go through the glass are going to heat up as well and if I heated them up too quickly they may expand while the glass has not had a chance to expand and they could crack the glass and I'm going to leave it like this actually it's probably too hot at the moment let's turn it down we're going to leave it around um, it's 3.8 volts there okay just a few minutes of Past, and the titanium is, has started to uh, sublime and condense on the cooler glass surface. You can see the mirror effect of the sublimed titanium. And hopefully enough of it is reacting with the nitrogen 
and oxygen in the tube to make a much higher vacuum. Okay, I decided to turn it off. It's not even been going for an hour. And as you can see, there's dense titanium on the walls of the tube. And I was afraid the whole tube was gonna get filled with this uh, titanium. The tube is now really hot. So I better let it cool down. Okay, I've activated the Tesla coil. I've let this cool down, it was really hot. And we're gonna see if there's any gas glow. If there's no gas glow, it means it's removed all the air from the tube. I'm not seeing any glow whatsoever. Now we're gonna test it to see if we can make cold cathode x-rays with it. Okay, what I've done now is connect the tube, the evacuated tube, across a high voltage. So I have the positive going to the glass and I've connected that with some wetted tissue paper. And then the negative is connected to the uh, coil. I have a Geiger counter right here, it's working. And here's the detector, handheld. Yep. Here are earlier tubes that I made using Dumay wire, which has a very similar coefficient of expansion to soda glass and slightly different coefficient of expansion to borosilicate glass, which I used in this case, but the vacuum seal seemed to, to work. Each of these tubes had a small piece of potassium introduced into the tube just before evacuation. And then I used a, a flame to heat up the potassium and evaporate it and it condensed as a mirror on the inside of the tube, as you can see here. The only problem with this approach is when the potassium evaporates or sublimes, it tends to go everywhere and it just coats almost diffusely the inside of the tube, which is not good if you want to make it a tube for making x-rays. Well, one of the things I didn't realize is that potassium has its own vapor pressure, which is high enough that it will uh, conduct electricity at high voltages and prevent uh, x-ray formation. And let me just demonstrate that for you using the Tesla coil. So with, with the uh, potassium in these tubes, I'm expecting all the air to be gone, which it is. But what I didn't realize is the vapor pressure of potassium at very hard vacuum levels is high enough to ionize the gas in the tube, and you can see it happening right there. See that glow in the tube? That's potassium ions in the tube that are glowing. And, you know, I repeated it thinking maybe I didn't get all the air out of the tube with the potassium, and guess what? Same thing again. The potassium vapor in this tube under very high vacuum the vapor pressure is high enough to cause ionization. So I want to summarize real quick. So this is the Dumay wire that makes a good glass to metal seal, but the wire is too thin to support anything and it would probably heat up because it's so thin. So I didn't use this. That's why I went with the molybdenum wire. These are all the attempts I made to get an x-ray tube and they all failed due to various reasons. I got good vacuums, but I was unable to get a hard vacuum and these are failures. So I was really happy to be able to get that to work today. And um, I'm gonna go on and make a, an actual focusable x-ray tube, but I just wanted to show you this experiment. I look forward to your comments and I hope to see you in future videos.